Melanie is our guest today. Boy, just, just thinking about those days takes me back. I know it does you too. Come when you back think about with come me. back. <laughs> anything that I ever do let me take you back that's right oh, I mean it really, really jogs it. some some cobwebs loose I mean cobwebs yeah. <laughs> I mean I'll go back but there's not any cobwebs <laughs> oh, no, well, we're probably close to the same age I mean you know Carly Simon and Joan Baez and Joni Mitchell in this this whole era of all this great music. Well, they I mean, were older women when I was starting. You, know? <laughs> you were the baby. I was the baby. You? I was the flower child. You were the baby of Woodstock, the darling of Woodstock. Yeah. Oh God, it was hard to live down to. Um, <laughs> Why? I was. Well, I wasn't really a, a hippie. I was an oddball, and that was the difference. You see, I didn't quite fit in the little niche of um, of of the communal. Let's do everything. So you um, didn't live in a commune or anything? No. no. Now I do. I have a family. <laughs> <laughs> Three kids. Yes. Yes. Very communal. <laughs> but, but you know, the older generation, you know, being an oddball and being a hippie was sort of one and the same. So yes. It, it started out that way, but, but then um, there, were, there were subtle differences that were recognized by the underground press, and I wasn't exactly uh, fondly recognized. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I was right in there. How yeah. old were you when you got your first big break? Um, well, I, don't, I guess I was uh, 18, and it was Woodstock. That was pretty big. The, <laughs> the biggest, the biggest. How did you come to play at Woodstock, anyway? I was, um, my publishing company was in the same office building as some of the people who were running it. And I just very naively went down and said, I love the sound of three days of peace, love, and music. Can I be in that show, too? And they said, okay. <laughs> I mean, they That's didn't. all there was to and, it? Yeah. And um, I wasn't on the poster, but they said I could do it. And I, I was uh, writing some music in England, and I had to fly into Woodstock to um, perform there. I had no idea. I mean, especially coming from a whole other country, I had no idea what I was about to fly into. Did I hear that you didn't come with this entourage of no, babies? No, you came I, with your with mother. My mother. <laughs> uh, my mother was there. She uh, drove me up, and then at one point we couldn't go any further. And so we, would, we called the people, and they said, yes, go to this motel, and then we'll arrange transportation there. I went to the motel, and there before my very eyes were all the superstars of the ages you know Janis Joplin was hanging out and Jimi Hendrix and everybody in the world Richie was Havens there. was playing. well he was yeah he was sort of more in my echelon of things but you know I'm talking these were major people at that time I was uh, relatively unknown along with Richie Havens we were kind of uh, the FM Mm -hmm. people and you know I've always wanted to ask somebody who's actually been at Woodstock since mm -hmm. I've heard all these years that there was so much pot being smoked there that you were just high sitting in the audience maybe I was <laughs> I, I don't know I mean, that could be every once in a while you know I, I get that feeling I don't know um, but I I think uh, there was oh definitely there was but uh, I, again, I was alone mm -hmm. there. My, my ha no, I had to leave my mother behind at the hotel <laughs> because <laughs> they only allowed managers and bands to fly in the helicopter. And so they said, you're not a manager. And you're her mother. <laughs> and you're, you're not a band. Not. So they left her. I was there all by myself in amongst superstars, thousands and thousands and thousands of God knows how many people. And they put me in this artist area. I had no backstage pass. The motorcycle guys who were hired to control people then kept pulling me out of the crowd, into out of the artist area, but, putting me into the crowd. You know, now that you look back, at the time it probably didn't feel this way. But do you? I mean, now do you look back and go, I was part of a phenomenon? Oh, I I, I knew it then. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. I had my first out of body experience. That's why I, I said it is possible that I was getting residual effects from these things that were going on. But um, oh. I totally, I mean, I never was the same. Uh, <laughs> uh, Melanie, uh, Connie from Zephyr Hills is on the phone, wants to talk to you. Go ahead. Melanie, I just wanted to tell you how much we missed you. Oh. And I've got your record that's got brand new key, and I think it's called Living Bell on it. Yes, that's one of my favorite songs. And it's one of mine, and too, and I played the record so much that it's warped, and I'm going to have to go out and buy a new one. But I just want to let you know that I'm glad you're back, and I appreciate seeing you on TV today. Great. Connie, buy Thank a you. CD player, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, you know, th these days just bring up great memories, and people do sort of wonder where you've been. And before, before you tell us where you've been and tell us about your new cause, I do have to ask something else. Now that I have you a, a chance in person to ask okay. you this. <laughs> Brand new key. Uh -huh. Any hidden meaning there? People who were smoking all sorts of mind-altering substances said, oh, there's, there's a deep meaning to I've got a brand new pair of roller skates, like <laughs> the existential meaning of life or something. Yep, that's what it was. 